Hello boys and girls, my name is Bob Grinier and I'm a volunteer with the Martin Fleischmann Memorial Project. Okay, so this is a tutorial on how to build a quantum coherent torsion field reactor using the equipment you see in front of you. This is something that you can do at home and it is using equipment that is certified for use in any country that I can think of. And the main component you're going to need is this. This is an ultrasonic cleaner, which is used for cleaning jewelry. And they typically retail for about $35, $40. Uh, you can get them cheaper, maybe. Uh, this one was bought in the US. Thank you to the donor that provided it. And it was the same device that Alan Goldwater had a little bit of serendipity in 2019 when he was cleaning a sample that was a control for a experiment we had done in Japan using another system by Dr. Roishin Amaza, which is a vibrator system, which it turns out through investigation actually had some ultrasonics going on. And so basically this is a little tank in here. I've actually removed the hinge on the lid. You don't have to do that, but I have. It makes it easier to get it on and off and it's not really relevant. And so it has a little ca cavity in here and a, under here there is a, a 43 kilohertz in this case transducer, PZT transducer, that uh, oscillates at 43 kilohertz and it produces a set of resonant modes in here and when it's filled with water. And the water I'm using is high quality domestic tap water here in, and this comes from a local faucet and I've just loaded it into this portable transf uh, transportation vessel here. And we're going to need some aluminium foil, or aluminium for those of you in the States. And you should be able to find this at any uh, hardware store or any sort of a grocery store. And it shouldn't cost you much, and we don't really very, need very much. You might find this in your parents' kitchen. And we have this one uh, cut into uh, about 20 centimeters square. Uh, and to do that, we used this device, which is the only thing we're not going to be needing beyond the point of cutting, and a sharp knife. And this is something you need to be uh, asking your uh, adult around you, uh, maybe your mother or father, to help you with. And then the last component we need, uh, you may not be familiar with these, but these are CD, uh, uh, and these uh, were used, this, in fact it's CDR, and you could write on these. This is before you had things like uh, micro SD cards and, and uh, just cloud storage. You were able to store a lot of information on these, uh, quite almost 74 minutes of music and stuff like that. And anyway, this it, you should, should still be able to, if you're lucky, be able to buy these at your local uh, computer shop uh, because people do actually still use them. And what we're after is this bit of plastic and it's going to act as like a glass bottom boat. And this was uh, an innovation that came was uh, came up um, was invented by a chap called uh, Alan Cusk, and uh, the 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 interesting thing about this is that they all seem to have this little lip, and it means that they can stack them in the shops. But the lip provides a little bit of space for water to be at the top, but um, uh, it means we can hold it in a fixed position in the. Um, uh, ultrasonic chamber so that the resonant modes uh, are, uh, aren't shifting around or the, the foil isn't shifting around in there um, changing the position of the resonant modes so we can actually uh, see how the um, the resonant modes in the water here are affecting the witness material which is our aluminium foil so I'm going to show you how to prepare that so we've done the cutting and we don't need all of this anymore so that's all we need that for and I'm going to set this up so you can see the uh, preparation process now actually what I've done here is um, I've actually cut uh, if you look uh, a hole here and I've also cut a notch now, there may be better ways to do this, uh, but this allows uh, me to allow the water in and the air out when I'm putting it into the chamber um, so that I can get a, a layer of water between here and uh, the foil, and the, the water is obviously behind the foil. And I've got the shiny side of the foil up. You could use either side. I've, I've actually uh, done this about two or three times now, um, and it doesn't really matter. Um, but if you are using the shiny side of the foil, do bear in mind that that will produce more specular when you look at it under high magnification. Okay, so essentially we just find a, a relatively smooth area uh, that we want to use and then just uh, fold this around. And I, I'm going to try and bear in mind where my hole is here so I don't block that. And it's, it's a fairly simple process. 
Uh, hopefully I can get it right whilst I'm talking at the same time. Uh, okay. And you kind of want it so that it's it's you've got a relatively smooth area underneath. And that will be your target witness material area. Okay, so squeeze in around the edge here. Now, we've got something for our air to come out here, but uh, we need that little gap over somewhere around here. I have it uh, somewhere, if I can find it. Where is it? <laughs> oh, I lost it. Yeah, um, it's over to the left here somewhere. Is it? Okay. Well, there are alternatives. Um, mm -hmm. Where did I put it? Uh, it was all going so well. Uh huh. Somewhere. I should have looked, really, shouldn't I? Uh, okay, I found it. It's over here. So this is my little hole. And that's where I'm going to allow the water to come in. Okay. But essentially, you want a, a fairly flat area. And we don't actually want to use um, uh, or film on areas where we're going to get the maximum damage. It's kind of like in between the areas of most damage, which you get the most interesting effects going on. But anyway, so there it is. We've got our little area here. So we're going to try and fill the uh, tank up. Now, it has a maximum area. Uh, if we can have a look over there, can we see that? There's a little maximum level here. And I, I fill it a little bit below that. Um, it actually has different resonances depending on how much water you put in. Um, and I have done a study on that, and you can go and see that on a blog, which will be linked at the bottom of this video. And you can see how this experiment came about. So I'm going to pour the water in now. Okay. So... If you let water settle for a little bit of time um, after pouring it out of the tap, it's better because it, you can then get rid of the excess air bubbles and it makes it nice and clear. Now, this is actually the toughest part of the experiment, other than apparently finding the hole, which I put to put the water uh, coming through. Now, um, the, the beauty of the innovation of this plastic is that it's just uh, about the same diameter as the width in this particular ultrasonic tank. Now, you might need to find something different that would work just as well. But what this means is I can push this in, and once it's in place, it doesn't really move around uh, backwards or forward, or even uh, front, uh, forward or backwards, left to right. It doesn't, doesn't move around. And that means that the resonant modes stay where they uh, start uh, most for the most part. And typically I find that I get some heavy damage here and here. And so I want a fairly smooth area to look at over here and uh, um, uh, have the camera trained at that. So I'm going to push this in now. And this can, I can actually get this wrong. So maybe you'll see me get it wrong. So you see the water coming in there. So I kind of let it in like this. And then, of course, this is now air that's trapped. Now, I could probably let the air out somewhere, somewhere over here, but I don't want to damage it too much in terms of... Oh, that's, that's done that quite nicely. Actually, you've just got one little air bubble down here. Okay, well... Now, oh, now, you want, you want to avoid getting water coming up here. Uh, and if you have a bit of tissue paper ready, you can uh, avoid that. Now, I know I've, I've gone and gone backwards. So, like I say, this this can be the actual fiddly part of the process. Uh, now, as I seem to have a big... If you have a lot of bubbles, a, a big bubble over here, what can happen is the ultrasonics cause this to produce little bubbles and they travel round and they obscure your camera's view. So I, I kind of really have to get rid of that. So let's see what I can do to do that. Is it going to come out of there? Like I say, this is the fiddly bit. Now, if I was being clever, I'd have like a little syringe and I would squirt the water through a hole and, and fill this up with a drain point or something like that. So there's many innovations you can come up with. So it'd be interesting to see how different people approach this. Mm -hmm. Maybe I can get rid of the air through there. Mm -hmm. No. 
<laughs> you know what, I might, I might actually just run it like that. We'll see how it goes. I've got a big air bubble here, but the active area that I want to operate in over there looks okay. Let's see if I can do a bit better. Ah, oh, there we go. I see I popped I popped the water out, but now I've got no I'm okay, I've got air over there now. Somehow that's got in there. <laughs> uh, I wasn't joking when I said this bit's fiddly. Probably there's about fifty different people out there going, He's not very bright, is he? You can you can do it like this. And this is where you can bring your ingenuity to the research. If I did it perfectly, it would be dull, wouldn't it? Okay, there we go. So I'm kind of happy with that because I've got a nice area over here, which is pretty flat. So if I show you that there, I can probably use this area over here as my target area. So I'm going to go and set that up where the camera is and we will see what happens. So today I'm going to be using this Canon EOS 90D and it has the ability to do 120 frames per second at 1080p and also even to do a little bit of 4K. So we're probably going to record this at the lower frame size uh, at the higher frame rate and then we can use an upscale function to post this to YouTube and not lose any data because of the uh, YouTube compression algorithm. Anyway, so the good thing about this camera uh, is uh, it has a uh, this lens that Canon makes which fits it uh, and it's a EFS 35 millimeter and it's a really nice tight scale macro lens and it has a built-in ring light so you can actually point that at your sample and get it well illuminated because often when you're using macro lenses that are able to go in very close they don't have the ability to uh, how should we put this uh, illuminate the sample because they actually shadow the light around it uh, and so that solves that problem so that's what we're going to be using okay today i've got this attached to the leg of my computer desk with this oot bit uh, clamp and I have this new were <laughs> knee were um, macro rail here so thank you to Bido for facilitating the purchase of those and I've set the you can set it for different times here I've set it for uh, 90 uh, seconds here okay before I kick this off I'm going to use the macro rail here just to make sure it's in focus I'm going to zoom in so that's right in and then I can just go up and down Maybe you see that that's in focus or not uh, so that looks like it's nicely in focus and I can move that around and just check other areas and I actually have a piece of tissue paper hanging around just to mop up any water that might get up there okay so we're there I think we're good on that and uh, I'll set up the camera here and hopefully the cannon does not turn off like so you can have a look at it whoa and, uh, oh no now I've moved it let's see if that's still in focus it's not in focus Okay, all right, so we will set this off and you will see what you see. First I need to press record.
Now, in the area that I chose, uh, it doesn't look to have done a lot, but you can see it's done quite a lot down here. Um, but I'm going to show you on the screen what you can see there. So I'm actually going to move this to an area that's less damage than here, but more damage than the area that we're looking at um, to see what we can find if we move that to that area. So I'm going to find a more damaged area. Okay, here. So there is our more damaged area. So you can see here if I zoom in on the camera, and I'm going to actually get that more in focus. Uh -huh. Looks to be more in focus there. Maybe you can see that. Uh -huh. Okay, now I'm going to set that off again a little bit longer. Another sort of minute eighty, let's say. Do that kind of where we're meant to be looking. Uh -huh. When I say a minute eighty, I mean one hundred and eighty seconds. Okay, that's done another 90 seconds. I'm going to switch this to recording at 4K so we can get a little bit more resolution on that.